The new GPT-40 images is nothing short of incredible. And I know, I know I sound like a classic YouTuber there, but this one is actually very, very useful. It gives me that little giddy moment because it's so good, so useful, and you should be aware of that it is in your arsenal. They recently updated the disgusting DALI 3, albeit at the beginning it was fun, but it wasn't that useful because the images were quite bad. The next set of images I'm gonna show you were all generated with GPT-40. I'm gonna show you some use cases that you might have seen in the release video from OpenAI. I'm gonna show you some other use cases that you didn't know existed and that this thing can do, and then explain why this is such a good thing for your blogging and your general content generation. So again, these images were all one shot prompt. This is me as a Studio Ghibli, Dragon Ball Z and Rick and Morty. You can see my childish choice of Netflix that I watch. The next one is I created a cocktail menu with one shot prompt as well. I didn't have to even tell it to write all the recipes for the Negroni, the Dark and Stormy. It just knew everything. I just asked it, hey, can you create me a cocktail um, can you create me a cocktail menu? And everything is correct. The text capabilities of this new image model are by far the best that I've seen. The next we have is it can create PNG with transparent with transparent backgrounds, meaning you can create a silly sticker image like this, but you can ask it to create transparent backgrounds. When you download it, you're kind of set to go. And even really complex, high quality illustrations that you can use throughout your blog posts, or you can even use in things like Pinterest, because again, they are all really high quality. And because you can do it within the same conversation that you're writing your blog post, it's contextually relevant and aware, and you don't have to continuously prompt this thing. Let me show you how when I wrote a blog post that took me a couple of minutes with this because you can change the models back to GPT-40 after maybe writing a prompt, a blog with GPT-3 mini, which recently has been one of my favorites. Every single image I generated here was in chat GPT and I didn't have to leave once the whole interface. I've got here the Swiss army knife that I think GPT is now thanks to this new image uh, update the comparison versus everything, the menu that I showed you before, all the different styles. So now I can create a blog post with contextually relevant images that are going to add a lot of value to my blog post. Really, really cool stuff. So let us let me show you the things that you can do. You're gonna open up a brand new conversation with ChatGPT and you need to make sure that you've got GPT-40 selected. The same images won't get generated with 01, 03 mini and the other models. Let's create a simple logo first of all because that can be very, very handy. I'm gonna do that right away. So I'm gonna say create a logo for our online community called AI Ranking with a call out at the bottom that says learn to rank number one with AI and automations, which is what our community is about. Make it modern, but minimalistic. I'm not even gonna ask it to select the colors, but I can do. I give it the hex code or even an example of the colors that I wanted to use, and it will stick to that. Now, you can see that the image is being generated it does take significantly longer than what Dali did, but considering how good the images are, I think it's much, I think it's a lovely trade-off to be honest. Okay, now here is my logo, which is not bad. Let's see if it can change a couple of things. First of all, let's ask it to make it transparent. I'm gonna say, can you please make it into a transparent background? Now easily, I've got the image as a transparent background. Let's just double check it and there you go, there it is is that's one simple example let's take an image let's say of my dog and create it into a animated style i'm going to create a brand new conversation and again i've got gpt40 selected that is my little dog nice and scruffy and i'm going to ask please turn my dog here into a studio ghibli art character i think everyone uses studio ghibli because it's so recognizable but you can just do animation or whatever what i found is that you can't do you cannot do things like mickey mouse and something within copyright that falls under copyright infringement it starts doing it and then it quickly falls off and within a few short minutes, there is my pup as a Studio Ghibli character. And I mean, the consistency is pretty good. You can see she's got some white here, white uh, chest, and all her paws are white. And it's the same thing here. I mean, <laughs> that, is, that is pretty, pretty cool. Whilst it might seem silly, we're going to get to the real stuff in a second. So 
Again, character consistency is really good. The texting, the text images is really good. The transparent background is fantastic. Here's where it can get really, really interesting for a blog post. So let's say I wanna add a little bit more value here. And I wanna add an illustration that kind of correctly explains the advantages of using GPT-40 images against the other image generation. That is, it's somewhere, all that information is somewhere in the blog post. What I've done is just copied the text of the blog post here. And I'm gonna say, I want you to analyze the text and the components of the blog post. And then I want you to create a description of an illustration that would add value to the blog post that would illustrate how and why GPT-40 with images is a lot better than the other image generation software. Now, this is, you still want to understand what it's trying to do. This one is going to be surprising if it gets it right, but I'm gonna see here, I'm gonna then tell it to get, to kind of create this infographic. And then we're gonna take it a step further with that, but let's see what it looks like once it generates that whole thing. Now, remember, this is quite complex. There's four panels here that hopefully it's going to get right. We'll see. Okay, let's see. Now this is kind of looking pretty good. So AI image model face-off, <laughs> mid-journey, image influx, GPT-4.0. Not too bad. I'm gonna ask it to change it because I want something a little bit more simple. Regardless though, this is pretty good. Let's see if we can create a more simple. Now we have a very simple infograph. One tool versus many, create a blog post in ChatGPT, generate an image generate image in an image tool, add text in a design app, all these sort of things. Whereas you can do write, generate image in all in everything. Now, you can also download this. If you download this, we look at the file. It's actually a PNG file. There's nothing wrong with that, but from, if you've been, if you watch any of my videos, I always tell you that a WebP file is the way to go because it's a lot lighter. So what we can do is ask it, hey, can you just give this to me in a WebP file? You gotta give it a minute and it will give you that little that little link to download the WebP file. And let's just check this out and make sure it actually is the WebP file. And you can see that there, one tools in many, it should be the same one. I've got here that in a WebP file, which I know seems like something very silly, but it's actually very, very helpful. Let's try and amend this right. Let's try and amend this image here. If we click on this, we're going to see that you can change this. You can describe what to add, what to remove or to replace. And you can also select the section here. So write a blog post, GPT, design. Let's add uh, in this section here, uh, make it a sad crying face, for example make this a sad crying emoji. And I've just selected that section, so hopefully it'll come back to me with just this selected section of a sad crying emoji. Silly example, but you get the idea. It should amend only that section there. Now we've got the same design, but with the only change that that is now a crying emoji face, which is what I used to feel like when I had to use so many tools for this. If you're writing blog posts just with GPT-4.0, really, really useful stuff. So how do I then create a really easy to really easy to use workflow for GPT 4.5 to write my blogs, for example, and then create the images within that. Well, the key is to get it to understand that it needs to write the blog post first. Whether you use GPT 4.5, 3.0 mini, whatever that is, you can use this prompt and I'll leave this linked in the video description below. But if we see here, we're asking it to don't do not generate the images only write the blog post and the detailed descriptions of those images so we're asking it throughout the blog post insert natural placeholders labeled one image one image two etc wherever a visual support would enhance the reader's experience because we find i can't really one shot the whole blog post with the images throughout it it's a little bit too much for it but we can get it to write the blog post and then generate the images at the end but it already creates the image descriptions for us. So let's give this a go. I'm going to copy this entire prompt. I'm gonna to go to ChatGPT. I'm going to create a brand new style. I'm gonna use 4.0 mini. I'm gonna click the research component, paste that prompt in there. And obviously you need to change a couple of things there. I'm gonna say, write a 1,500 word blog post on the dangers of AI generated images because there is a real danger here. And we'll show you that in a second. I'm going to actually improve this, do some research first, and then we're going to get it to write the whole thing. 
Now, is this going to be ready to upload right away, meaning the text? No, but it's gonna create the bulk of this for you. If you have another prompt that you like that GPT-03 Mini uses, that you can get GPT-03 Mini to write in your tone of voice, then you should use that 100%. But you can see it's starting to generate the blog post doing a little bit of research. Now it's writing my blog post and it's leaving little sections here, image one. I like this one better. Image one, a conceptual illustration showing a computer screen with a face being transformed into another. Pretty good, that makes a lot of sense. Split screen, and it's given me the image descriptions at the end. So I can now change this to GPT-40. I need to change it to that for the images. And I'm going to go, okay, now create this image. I don't have to generate all of them, but I can generate two, three, can generate all of them and place them in there. I'm gonna say, now create the image. I'm going to get rid of search, by the way. I think that sometimes that clashes too much and it tries to find an image online as opposed to generate the image. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna give it a while and now I can download those images as a WebP because it can do that for you and insert it into our blog post. I'm just gonna give this a second and show you what that would look like. And perfect, that image would go really well in there, somewhat artistic, but I can, I can get it to change that if I want right away and I can continue to go and ask it, okay, now generate image two, generate image three, you get the idea. Really, really useful tool to be able to understand all of its functionality. The final thing that I wanna show you is that it can, it has a lot less restrictions than normal. Let's say for example, an image of Donald Trump next to the Pope smoking, thin cigars, for example, which would be a crazy image, which would be a somewhat image of Donald Trump next to the Pope smoking thin cigars. The image looks like it's been taken by a Polaroid camera. So I'm trying to put two public figures in a somewhat compromising setting. Also though, I want the stylistic approach to it. So this is showing you that it's got a lot less safety rail guards and you can change the aesthetic of that realistic looking image. A couple of things that I've tried is creating images of like Mickey Mouse and things like that. And those things that fall under clear copyright infringement, you can't quite do. You can probably trick the model into creating those images, but one shot prompt, unlikely. Now let's see what the result of this image generates. And there we go. There is Mr. Donald Trump and the Pope smoking cigars that obviously are meant to look like blunts, but you get the idea. So big disclaimer here, be very careful with image generation capabilities and understand that nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing in the internet is real, but also it can be an incredible useful tool for your arsenal when it comes to content creation. If you like this type of content that will help you use these tools to rank better on Google search GPT and perplexity, making your business found a lot easier, make sure you consider subscribing to the channel. And if you really found value in this video, make sure you give this video a like. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.